Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for this Thursday, the 16th of September. Yesterday, our premier here in Alberta um, had a press conference late in the day and announced some startling things about um, how many people are in our ICUs and the crisis in the health health field and what's happening with vaccinations and the the fact that we're leading the country in new COVID cases every day um, and our death counts keep growing. Just the other day we were looking at 24 deaths in one day and as a, a friend mentioned, Fred mentioned uh, on his Facebook or Twitter, one or the other, I think it was Facebook, said 24 deaths a day, that's like one death an hour for something that we can prevent, for something that by choosing to be healthy, by choosing to be vaccinated, by choosing to stay home if we're not feeling well and not spreading it to others, we could prevent these deaths. And that's, it's devastating. I also read an article about um, doctors needing to learn how to triage. And it mentioned the fact that, that doctors aren't trained to do that anymore. Um, military doctors, doctors on the battlefields learn to triage. And when we say triage, we're not talking about going into an emergency room where they take a look at you and if you're bleeding, you sort of go to the front of the line. If you're, um, you know, sprained an ankle, then you're going to wait a while, it's, it's, which, is, which is the most acute and the most urgent. Which one is going to lead to death and which one simply leads to discomfort? And how do we treat people quick, like in order? This is a different kind of triage than we're used to seeing in our hospitals. This they're talking about the triage of which people can be saved, which people can be helped, which people will simply be made to feel comfortable until they die, or worst case, which people will simply be turned away from the hospital because we don't have the beds, the space, the nurses, the doctors, the equipment, the, 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 the resources that we need because things are happening so quickly. Why didn't we learn this in the first, second, or third wave? Why are we in a fourth wave talking about doctors needing to learn to triage? Now, I know that it wasn't implying that doctors are the only one, but the fact is that our nurses, the nurses' aides, the staff in the hospitals, the people who empty garbage cans and take care of removing the, the things that are used, like the, the custodians and caretakers, the, the janitors in our hospitals, all of these people, all of these people are part of that triage decision-making process. Whether they help to make the decision or not, they are dealing with the impacts of those decisions. And then so is our society. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, as a priest, how many people might I or might other priests have to bury because they were not able to get help? What about all the people who are, who are needing help for other things? People who are, can't, are, are needed for cancer surgeries or um, transplants? People who are develop pneumonia because they're, like, they're predisposed to it. Other people who simply need help. Women who are in distress in pregnancy, newborns. The list goes on and on for people who will not be able to access health services because of people who have chosen not to get vaccinations. There is a part of me that wants to say, if you choose not to get a vaccination, then maybe you get chosen not to be part of the triage. But then there's the bigger part of me that says that that is wrong. I'm not called to judge. I am not called to be the one to make that decision. Thanks be to God, it's not me. However, how do we encourage people? How do we help people who are scared, who are terrified of what this vaccination process looks like. I don't understand it myself. I have been benefited from vaccinations. My measles, mumps, rubella, my tetanus shots, you know, all those things over the years, they have in, invariably probably saved my life without me ever knowing my life would have been in danger, as have 
millions of Canadians over the generations. But there are people out there who are, they are worried about the vaccinations and there are people who are so worried about the government doing something to them or not trusting the government that they are willing to put their own lives on the line. There was a doctor being interviewed um, yesterday from um, Toronto or Hamilton Healthcare, somewhere in there. And he was talking about the fact that there are people who, when they're about right before, one person said right before they were about to be intubated in the intensive care unit because of COVID, asked if they could have the vaccination. They had been an anti-vaxxer and chose and wanted to choose the vaccination at the moment right before they were going to be intubated. And it was too late. What has happened to our society that we are so untrusting? What has happened to us that we are so, we are so paranoid that someone else is going to try to do something horrible to us that we don't trust the very people who are trying to help us? I am scared. I am scared for the people who have to make these decisions and I'm scared for their families, uh, the families, both of the people who have to make the decisions because mom or dad carry that home with them, having to choose triage, you know, if that, if it comes to that. But I'm also scared for the families of those who are sick and dying, for those who will die, for those who have died. I'm scared for what they will feel and how they will, how they will react when this is all over and they look back and think, if only my brother had gotten the vaccination, if only I had encouraged rather than discouraged my sister or my friend, my lover, my partner, my parent, my child from going and trusting that which we've not needed to question before. The vaccines are not some kind of world conspiracy. We are not being microchipped. We are not being forced to do something to our detriment. We are doing something that calls us all to take care of one another. Our society has become so me oriented that we are not able to recognize that we can't survive on our own. We need to survive in a community and our communities are being decimated by illness, by death, by anger and fear and paranoia. We need to step up, people. We need to get vaccinated, to wear our masks, to encourage others to do the same, to stay home if we're not feeling well. We need to pray for our doctors and nurses and for all those who work in hospital settings. We need to pray for those who are sick and those who are stubborn and will get sick. We need to pray for God's mercy. We need to pray that we will all together recognize the ways that God is working in our world through one, of our, one, one another, through science, through politicians, through communities. We must begin to trust. We must do the right thing. I do not want to need to be the priest who hears the confession of a doctor who comes broken hearted because he had to turn someone away because they were too sick. They didn't have a big enough chance of surviving. I don't want anyone in my family, my community, my world to be the person that is turned away. God help us all. God bless you. And I'll see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.